i is a linear order, and i less than j implies that gi is a subgroup of gj. So it's a chain of groups. We can think of i as being the natural numbers and the groups are indexed by natural number for a first approximation. Then you can take the limit or the union of this chain, and this will already be this will be a group. So then the union that I will call T is a group. So you might wonder what I mean by the union. So let me tell you what it is in details. So what is G exactly? So the universe of G. Set of elements of G is just going to be the union of the elements of the GI, so let's, this is easy. But they seem to have the same unit. Yeah, so when I say GI is a subgroup of DJ, ah, of I mean that yes. uh, the yeah, one. Yeah, that, that's, uh, yeah, I get it. I would say so. The one of gi is the same as the one of gj, yeah, sure. and I don't know, the, the operations match up, and the operation match, matches up. So, so products, so I will write it again. If a and b are in gi, then a times in the sense of gi, b the same as A times B in the sense of GJ. So multiplication in GJ restricted to GI is the So this is the universe. And how are you going to define the binary operation on G? Uh, it's just going to be what you think. So the only possible thing. So, so if I take A, B in G, uh, then A times B in the sense of G would be defined as A times B in the sense of GI, where I is big enough to contain both A and B. And there are many possible I's like this, but by this property, it doesn't matter which one they pick. So you can always define the union, but the important part is that it's a group. And why is it? Well, basically, I mean, just check. So what do you have to check? That the operation is associative, it's fine. Uh, that inverses exist, it's all fine. If you take A in G, then it's in GI, so there's an inverse in GI also. Um, and that's basically it. But that's an important property of groups, and many other algebraic objects have this property. Size in undergraduate algebra. Prove it. So, for your favorite thing. So, I don't know. If you take fields, they have this property uh, vector spaces, and so on. So, what I want to do is give a framework where basically it axiomatizes this property and nothing more, really. And then still see that uh, we can we can still say something interesting about a nice class in that framework. Um, but unfortunately, I have to start with some background in logic to make sense of it. So, what I want to start with is generalize the notion of a group to the notion of a structure. So, a structure will just be a universe together with a bunch of operations. Uh, and I need to specify kind of what the operations will be. So, okay, so this is background. The definition, a language is a set consisting of Um, 
about function symbols and cost symbols, and I will say what I mean exactly. Um, and to each of these things, each function and relation symbol, it also comes in an arity. Natural number. So, for example, the language of group has this binary operation, and so it has a symbol for this binary operation times, and it has also a couple more symbols. Um, this is going to be a definition, but hopefully you can see how it relates. So, so it has. binary function symbol that I will call cross, I guess, it's kind of the time operation. It has, I'm also going to have a fixed constant symbol for the unit. Also, a unary function symbol for picking the inverse. So I could have omitted some of these things. That's true, but it's going to be important that I include them. Um, so it's going to be just operation of picking the inverse. So language is just a bunch of symbols. Um, it doesn't tell me anything about how the operation behaves. It just tells me, well, um, this is what I have to work with when I want to talk about groups. Now, what do I do with the language? I can define L structures or models. So in that case, the language of group has no relation symbols. Uh, you could imagine, I don't know, putting an ordering on the groups. So if you consider ordered group, there would be a relation symbol less than binary relation symbol. So let me give you another example. Uh, the language of linear holders. So that's a different language. L I will define it just as having one binary relation symbol. So when you talk about linear order, you just have this ordering less than, and that's just a binary relation. Um, but groups, well, basically, they only have functions. You don't usually have, you know, in general, you don't define any relation. You define relations eventually. In the basic language of groups, you just have functions. Um, hopefully, it will come clearer soon. Um, so let me define what an L structure is. So for L a language, an L structure consists of several things. It has a universe. It's an empty set. Um, I will call the universe. So for a group, it would just be the set of elements in the group. Um, so I will call the set A so that I can refer to it. And I will call this thing M. And then, what else do you have to specify when you study groups? You have to say what the multiplication symbol is. And in general, what all the other symbols are. So when you study the orders, we have to specify what the ordering is. So for each symbol in the language, you have to specify an interpretation, a way to make sense of, of that function. And you know, how the function will act on the universe. So for each, okay, so I will do it for function symbols. For 
average function of symbol f in the language, and let's say it has every t n, I will specify some interpretation f n, which will send n tuples in A to n m t. So in the case of group, this would be my multiplication function, n would be equal to 2. Um, and similarly for the others, so similarly for constant symbols and relation symbols. All right, so this is just gonna tell me you know, what, which vocabulary I have to work with just so that I don't mix up models that are linear orders with models that are groups. Um, but then, another point that I will make clearer very soon is that this still doesn't tell me what the group is. It just tells me what is a structure with a binary operation. But then it doesn't tell me anything about the axioms of group. So let me give you two examples. So first, so just work in the language of group. Um, so let M1, well let M be the M structure with, okay, so universe will take it to be Z. So this is just definition for purpose of illustration. Um, and then multiplication would be addition. So for A and B in A, I have to define, since I want to define a structure, I want to define interpretation for each of these things here in the language of groups. So I will define what it means. to multiply A by B. So okay, so here I've written the function in this pedantic way, but you know, usually we write multiplication like this and you won't write times a b or something like this. So I'll write it this way. So I'll just define this to be a plus b. And then similarly I define uh, inverse and units. So the one will be zero and uh, taking inverses will just be So then this is just the integers with addition. So this is a group. 